What's going on guys? It's Ryan from Ryan and Crystal's Reviews and it's Friday and it's time to check out and review the books that I got this week. Uh, so if you go back and watch the video from Wednesday, you'll see that I got about 16 books. Uh, there were a couple books that I didn't read. Uh, one was a Stray Dogs. Number two it was a third printing. I got that mainly for the cover. And then the other book that I didn't read was Hellions. Um, I got this specifically for the cover. This is issue 13. I'm not a huge fan of this book. I mean, it's just this cover was amazing, so I had to pick it up. So we're going to set that up there. So we're going to go through the books that um, that I, I could have skipped and been okay with. And then we're going to go through the books that were, were good. They just didn't make my top five. And then we're going to do my top five picks. So first up, book I could have skipped, and this one hurt a lot because I really wanted this book to be good, is Masters of the Universe, Revelation number one. It just didn't do it for me. Um, I'm a big He-Man and Masters of the Universe fan. I have been ever since I was a kid. And I just just didn't do it for me. It just wasn't really all that solid. It was kind of a weird read, kind of a long, odd read. And, you know, it is what it is. So, um, it's disappointing. Hopefully, issue two will pick up. Uh, I think it's just a four issue run. If issue two doesn't pick up, I probably won't even get the last two. Next up, um, is Amazing Spider-Man Annual number two. This is the Infinite Destiny storyline. This is another skip. Uh, I just really didn't like it. Um, this kind of brought me back to Iron Man one. I thought the last, last three had been really good. Last three or last two? Last two. Captain America and Black Cat Annual number ones were really good. Um, this one just dropped the bar for me. Drop the ball, drop the bar, load the bar, whatever you want to call it. The Nick Fury story is really good though. So if you were going to get it, you could get it just for that. Because the Nick Fury story has been really good. That's been run, run through all those. So those are my skips for this week. Only two skips. So that's, that's good. So not... One is four ninety nine, the other is three ninety nine. So I could have saved nine bucks, eight bucks. Okay, so now the books that I were good, but just didn't quite make my top five. Uh, first off is Batman Adventures Continue uh, Season Two Issue Two. I really enjoyed this. The Court of Owls are um, plotting to retake Gotham. And Dead Man's there, and it's it's kind of cool to see Dead Man and Batman go back and forth. Um, so it was a good book, a solid book, and hopefully, hopefully this continues. I really I enjoyed the first uh, the first run of that in season one. So hopefully, season two. And it's weird because Zatanna's on the cover, but she's not even in the issue. She's mentioned a couple times, but that's it. Before we go any further, and I always forget to say this, spoilers, since we're going forward to where I want to start talking about books more, the details of the books, spoilers, are coming. Next up, uh, Batman 110. It was just okay. Um, it didn't really... I've really enjoyed the story up to this point, but for some reason this one just just didn't, didn't pull me in like the ones before have. Um... You know, Ghostmaker is doing his thing. Bruce is still kind of stuck in the Scarecrow world, or is he, or is he not? I don't know. It's just okay. Not a skip it, just okay. Uh, next up is Avengers uh, 46, Legacy 746. This is the beginning of World War She-Hulk. And... It was okay. I thought the opening to this, it's its a solid opening. I was ex i was hoping for more, but at the same time, the way they've written this book and written the character in the past months, because this is the first book, first Avengers book we've had in a couple months, has just been so-so. I like to see the Winter Guard. Um, I think that has a lot to do with who's behind me over here. Uh, the movie with Red Guard and everything, because that's what they do. When the movies are coming out, they bring the characters out in the comics to tie them together to get you to kind of buy more. So it's it's, a, it's an okay opening. The Winter Guard's trying to take uh, Jen, and which they do. They take her to the Red Room, and they are brainwashing her to turn into the Red She-Hulk. 
and basically unleash her on the world. Next up, uh, Immortal Hulk 48 Legacy 765. It's a solid issue. Um, not a whole lot of action going on. A lot more between Hulk and Betty. And honestly, that's about it. Uh, the art in the book is amazing. That's probably that's really the only reason why it made it into my OKs. Is for the art and the cover, of course. That was a borderline skip because it was just kind of there. And we're getting towards the end. You would think that we would be working up that to that climax, but that book just kind of bleh. But it was just okay. Uh, next up is Green Lantern number four. Same deal, just kind of okay. Just I felt like it was just there. Um, I don't know, maybe I missed something in this one. There was a lot. There was some good action in it. I thought the art was good, but I was, I don't know. It's just okay. Next up, Wonder Girl number two. Again, just okay book. Uh, so Yara is fighting the Amazon Amazonians and she doesn't quite understand why, but yet she kind of does, I think. I don't know. Um, and then you've got, at the end, you've got Cupid or Eros, um, who's going to fall in love with her and with Yara. It's just okay. Just okay. Uh, next up, X-Men number one. It's just okay. Uh, definitely get it. It's worth it's worth the read. There's some good action in it. More about kind of the fallout from the Hellfire Gala and continuing on that story. Um, cover, there's like 45,000 different covers for this thing. It's a good book. It's okay. well, it's, it, was, it was a good book. It didn't make my top five, but hey, you know, still a good book. Okay, so now for the top five, which we'll go into a little more detail in these books. Number five, Extreme Carnage. Number one, Alpha. So this is part one of eight of the Extreme Carnage line. So Carnage is back. Cletus Cassidy is dead, but Carnage is the bond between those two as uh, Flash puts it, is stronger than any bond that a symbiote and a host has ever had. So Carnage is still alive, but there's still the remnants of Cletus Cassidy in him. So he is trying, there is a, um, an anti-symbiote movement going on from Senator Peter Crane, and he is trying to overthrow, and, and, and well, not overthrow, but use that as a political springboard to become president. And it leaves it hanging at the end whether or not he has been taken over by um, the symbiote because, or by Carnage because that's what Flash thinks. Flash thinks that he has. And Flash is trying to recruit some people to help him on this quest. Iron Man shows up, oddly enough, and needs his help because his one of his extremist armors has bonded with the symbiote he calls an, an extreme biote. That's a new term for me. Um, so Flash is working on trying to find people that he trusts so he can try to take down Carnage. So we've got, um, what's next? Scream is next, I believe. Next issue, uh, next week. It was a good solid opening. Really enjoyed it. It was a good read. Good solid opening. I think it's going to be a great story. Number four, Amazing Spider-Man number 70. This book has not made it in my top five since I started doing this. So it's nice to see uh, Chameleon Conspiracy is long gone, and we are prelude to Sinister War. This uh, this this book was was a lot better. Uh, Kindred shows up. Harry and um, Kara are in. They are being held captive somewhere, um, and then they start talking about things. And then she's didn't want to tell him that. Oh yeah, um, she got there because Kindred captured her but kindred is you so not really sure how you're here so there's a little bit of twist there and then um uh dr connors and the lizard are separated and doc ock shows up with 
Electro, Sandman, and Craven, and they kind of they capture uh, Doctor Connors, and then um, they go back to Kindred, and and Doc Ock says, "Hey, you told me I could, you know, pick five. So and he's like, "Yeah," and I told you I'd pick the six. And then, then they show this nice splash page of Mysterio, which to me kind of looks like Mysterio and Vulture combined. I'm not really sure. I kind of, I looked at that for a while. I wasn't really positive of that, but I could be wrong. I don't know. But this book hasn't made it in my top five since I've been doing this. So it's nice to have this, the Spider-Man title in there. So Sinister War is up next. So we get um, Sinister War number one, and then we flip to Amazing Spider-Man 71. So I think that comes out next week. They keep doing Spider-Man books like every week now. Number three, so this was a book for me. Whoops, I always do it this way. Number three, Blacksmith. Um, this was an interesting read. This uh, She is a detective who's also a werewolf, and she gets shot with a silver bullet. It's all in black and white. Little Walking Dead throwback there, which I like. Um, she gets hit with a silver bullet, and then it turns into trying to figure out what's going on, who did it. She's got a partner. I can't really, I, I, his name is Siat, I think. I think that's how you say it. Um, but they feel like they're being hunted. And um, with good, with, you know, good evidence because they are kind of so it was a good breed um looking forward to the second issue seeing where where it goes there's a big twist at the end which kind of threw me off like i had to, i read it two or three times just trying to understand it um so they go back to their private eye investigation because they're detectives or investigators and there's a man there that says you know i've got a um he said, uh, it says this, it says, um, he's talking about the, there's, he's got a newspaper with a headline that says twisted mauled or Taurus mauled by mountain lion, which is basically her because she turned into a werewolf and killed a guy. So he says something was stolen from me and I'd like it back. And he shows her, it gives her a picture and he says the pistol is of great personal importance. My grandfather carried it with him onto Normandy beach on D-Day. However, the bullets, this is where it gets interesting. This is the last panel. I cast them myself from the 30 pieces of silver paid to Judas Iscariot for his betrayal of Jesus Christ. So this guy has to be, if he's telling the truth, has to be some sort of immortal. Because that's the only way possible that he could he could have those 30 pieces of silver. Um, and that's where it ends. So it, it leaves on a nice cliffhanger. It's, it was a solid read. I was real happy with it. I was surprised by it. That was a late, that was a late in the week pickup. That was a pickup. I did my, on Tuesday, I'm like, you know what? Let's try it out and see. And that's all it was. So, solid. Next up, I keep goofing this up because I like to do it this way. Next up, number two, Basilisk, number two. Uh, so, real solid. Um, the Senses. The other, her group, the senses, because hers is the eyes, you've got the ears, the nose, um, the mouth, you know, sight, taste, touch, feel, and uh, hearing. The, so they're all involved in this. Hers is the main character. Hers is the sight. That's how she kills people. Um, there's a really interesting part in this uh, where she can communicate with another one of the with the one that has the, the hearing ability, he like shows up in the mirror and so she can talk to him. Um, and then there's the other two, which is the, which I believe is taste and smell. And then you have I touched. So you have the other three, I think, um, cause it's, it's, there's a lot going on here. And it's this point to where they he makes it to where they've got to taste everything, so that it might be um, that might be 
the actually one of them actually bites her arm and the other one sticks a fork up his nose because he can smell all this stuff that is he says it stinks like grandma's funeral rotting flowers get it ow and he sticks the nose up or he sticks the fork up his nose and then there's the, the they're in a they're in a diner and the fry cook is back there he's like i have to know have to have to know what it tastes like and he just buries his head in the in the grease um so obviously the this is a group of people that have the ability to kill people by using the senses, by using the by using sight, taste, touch, uh, uh, hearing, and smell. So, really interesting book. Boom is kicking it out of the. I mean, they're knocking it out of the park when it comes to that. So, that's my number two pick. Number one, and you probably did not see this. So you probably know which one it was. I'm loving this series so far. A no-brainer. Nice House on the Lake issue two. Phenomenal. Um, I still think issue one was a little bit better. But we start to see a little more of the reaction to what they found out in the first issue. So they found out in the first issue that the world has ended. They have all these, all these things on Facebook, Twitter, all the social media people, just their skin melting off. And then it's the reaction to that. It's the reaction to, um, I'm trying to think of his, of, uh, what's his name? Walter. It's the reaction to Walter exposing himself as some sort of alien style being, being. We're not really sure yet what he is, if it is an alien or if he's something else, but they, I think they call him one, a, a, a meat, a flesh tornado is um, the term they use in one of these. So everyone has their own call sign, everyone has their own um, rooms, etc. And they all kind of confused on what's going on. None of them really know, none of them really understand it. You know, there's one of them that she was invited, but her husband wasn't. And basically everyone outside this is, is dead. They found that there is an invisible wall that separates them from the outside world and they have all the food they need they have all the i mean one of them talks about cigarettes but they go out and smoke and they're like we could probably smoke all these cigarettes you'd go back up in your room and you find a fresh pack that's just the kind of the way it's, it's going on walter basically comes and goes as he pleases now he has cornered one of the one of the one of his friends and asked him to help him along in the process of coping with this and, and continuing on so you start you kind of see him start to flip sides a little bit and try to start to pull in another one which i think is his wife or his girlfriend to pull her into it to help him and that i think that's going to be a big plot point going forward is how are these people going to react to what's going on you know uh so there's there's and they keep a house log a transcript transcript so you've got to read all that, read through all that. And they, you know, they don't, and the other thing is, is they're not called by their name on the transcript. They're reporter, account, scientist, um, comedian, artist, acupuncturist, writer, doctor. So there's, they're listed out as their own, what, what titles he gave them. So who is recording this? And why is it being recorded? So there's a lot. Of, there's still a lot of questions out there um, as to really what is going on. They've got video. They're they're being video uh, taped all the time. All that footage is being saved. There's itineraries. Like there's an itinerary here. It says Monday, June fourteenth, day one, three to six. Everyone arrives. Six to eight. Steaks on the grill. Ten to twelve for the night crowd. Monster movie. That's it. So they found out that the world's ended, but then you're supposed to just go by the itinerary. Tuesday, June 15th, day two, 8 to 11, lazy morning breakfast, 11 to 12, house meeting, week's grocery list, 12 to 4, take out the boats, 4 to 6, relax, 6 to 8, family dinner, 10 to 12 for the night crowd, th thriller Tuesday. And it just goes through the whole week like that. So they're supposed to follow that itinerary. Like, I mean, they put relax, he puts relax on here. Like there's some days it's like two, two times. For like two hours, you're just supposed to relax, which I mean, when you think about it, would probably be kind of cool, but at the same time, it's just really weird. And there's a lot of there's a lot of questions that they keep that 
you know, that keep kind of creeping in here that we don't know answers to yet. And that's that's what makes honestly it's what's made this series really really great. They start to dis they start to go in and discover more of the house. So they go and they find there's a spa, there is a, a movie theater, there's a library. And then a little throwaway part of it, and I think it was it's intended this way, is that one of them says, this whole effing shelf is books and comics that he told me to read going back to when we were teenagers. So there's a little bit that he is connected to each one of these people so much that he has brought things back from years ago and put it in the house as memories. So it's going to be interesting to see where this goes. Now, during that, and I think that's the reason why that was kind of a throwaway, because right after that, the next panel, they find a key with a little door, a lock behind these books. And then as you go forward a little bit, um, well, let's get to this part first, because this part is also important. So one of them kind of starts to lose his mind a little bit. They find this, he, he finds this statue, because he went out walking, and he's the one that found the invisible wall. Finds a statue. When they touch it, they see what is going on at their home. So one of them touches it, and then you get you get that panel with you know basically New York burning. What what I would think would be New York burning down, and people with skin melting off and their skin doing all this weird stuff. So um, come to find out that key unlocked a door. They go behind the bookcase. They find a bunch of guns and ammunition. And, you know, it ends with, with, um, let me go back to his name because it, it's hard to keep track of everybody. The only bad thing about it is it's hard to keep track of everybody in this because they call each other, they call each other by their names, but yet then the book calls them by their call sign. Well, I'm going to call a call sign. Um, Let's see, I think it is Rick. So Rick is the one that he, that Walter convinces to help him out. And then the, end of the, the, the last panel is him convincing his wife, girlfriend to go along with it. This has, I got a lot of um, Dreamcatcher vibes with this once um, I kind of got in the story a little bit. And then... Um, but Hey, like I said, it's, it's really good. There's a little bit of that dream catcher, but it's still that original feel to it. So, uh, that's it for this week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you all enjoyed my top five and, um, please like, and subscribe, hit the little bell for notifications and we'll see you in the next video guys. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you Sunday. We might see my, who knows, but we're going to see you in the next video.